I've been using Google's Pixel 8 for over a month now, and in this video, I want to share my experiences of using this phone every day so you can decide whether it's the phone for you or not. I made a video when I first got the Pixel 8 on my first impressions and initial review, so I'm not going to cover anything that I already covered in that video, unless I'm giving you an update on anything that's changed. Due to this, I'd recommend that you watch that video before or after watching this video so that you can get a better idea of my overall thoughts and feelings around this phone. Alright, let's crack on. First, let's talk about battery life. When I first got this phone, the battery life was pretty erratic, with me seeing drastically different battery performance depending on what I was doing that day. Since then, I've stopped stress testing my Pixel 8 and started using it more like I'd normally use my phone. So now I've got more of an idea of how it will hold up in everyday use. My biggest takeaway from this is that screen on time should not be the decider of whether this phone's battery performs well or not, because my screen on time varied wildly depending on how I use the phone each day. On the days where I'm not at work and I have more time to look at my phone, I'll tend to end the day with more screen on time and less time where I'm using the phone to listen to audio-only media such as podcasts, music, or audiobooks. However, on the days I am at work or I'm just doing something where I don't have time to look at my phone, I'll tend to end the day with the same remaining battery as those days where I have high screen on time. This is because on the days where I don't have time to look at my phone, I'll tend to be listening to Spotify or Audible more, and I'll tend to be connected to a Bluetooth speaker or my Pixel Buds Pro. This is why I say screen on time isn't necessarily indicative of how good this phone's battery is because everyone uses their phones in completely different ways. In my experience, if you mainly use your phone to scroll social media, browse the internet, or watch videos, then you're going to probably be able to achieve five to six hours of screen on time with the Pixel 8. However, for most people in everyday use, there's going to be more of a mix of these activities and background activities, such as listening to audio with the phone screen off, and some more intense activities such as navigation with maps. On these more varied days with the Pixel 8, you're more likely to see anywhere between 2.5 hours hours to four hours of screen on time, but with the battery just about lasting you to the end of the day. For context, I usually take my phone off charge around 6.30 a.m. when I get up and put it back on charge about 10.30 p.m. when I go to bed. This is 16 hours of varied use where I can be listening to audio from Spotify or Audible for around three to five hours and have screen on time for somewhere between three and four hours. I usually end the day with somewhere between 10 and 30% of my battery remaining. Bear in mind, this is a fairly long day, so for it to last the full day is pretty good in my opinion. So let's move on to the camera. And my initial impressions from my last Pixel 8 video still stand. The video is good enough for most situations, but the photos that you get straight out of camera on this phone are excellent in my opinion, with a good balance of contrast and colors. It's unfortunate though that Google limited the more manual settings control to the Pixel 8 Pro because this is something that I would definitely have made use of in the Pixel 8 if it was available. The only real update I have regarding the camera app is about the white screen issue that I noted during my last Pixel 8 video where the app would randomly swipe a white screen from the right as if the camera app had reset itself. Basically, I've not noticed this for a while now, so I think it might have been fixed in Google's update at the start of November which is good. Although the white screen issue is seemingly being fixed, I encountered another slight issue where I noticed a few times that the phone just randomly seemed to restart itself. Basically, if this has happened, when I go to use the phone, I notice that the phone is locked down and it requires my pin to unlock it rather than requesting my fingerprint. I've only actually caught it restarting itself without any prompt once but there's been two to three times in one day where it's been locked down for no obvious reason, which is why I suspect it's been randomly restarting. The only other explanation for this is that I could be accidentally pressing the power button and the volume up button at the same time in my pocket, which is triggering the power menu, which has the lockdown, restart, power off, and emergency options on there. But if this was the case, then I'm surprised it's never triggered the power off or emergency options by mistake, so I don't think it can be this. Moving on to some notes about the general usage of this phone, and the first thing up is the speakers. I've noticed that these don't get particularly loud. This isn't an issue in 90% of cases, but when I'm trying to listen to a YouTube video in a loud situation, such as when I'm brushing my teeth or doing the dishes, I struggle to hear what's being said. I'm only bringing this up because this isn't an issue that I had with my Samsung S22 that I owned before picking up the Pixel 8. And if you're someone who frequently relies on playing media out of your phone's speakers, then this could be a problem for you. However, the speaker on the top of the phone gets nice and loud during phone calls and has really good clarity for when you're speaking to someone with the phone up to your ear. Next, AI features were a huge selling point for Google for this phone. 
However, I'll admit that I haven't really used any of the AI camera features since I tested them for my initial review video. And this is mainly because in my opinion, the loading time for these takes too long. This is because you have to be connected to the internet so that the phone can connect to Google servers to make these AI features work. But this is definitely a topic for us to go into more detail on in another video. I also just haven't really had a situation where I wanted to use these and I've instead used Photoshop to remove things from a photo where I wanted to. This is mainly because I already have a workflow for this in Lightroom and Photoshop, so you may actually use these features more than me. Apart from the camera AI features, probably one of my favorite features on this phone is the read aloud feature for web pages. I honestly hate reading, which is why I listen to so many audiobooks and podcasts. The read aloud feature makes taking in written articles so much easier, as I can just listen to them, and I can change the speed of the voice based on my preference. The voice also isn't super robotic, which is really important. Some champion their environmental impact, others point out potential dangers but most agree regulation is needed. This is a fairly simple feature, but I really like it. I also really like the simplify page feature, which basically activates reading mode on a web page and removes any ads or other distracting elements from that web page so that you can focus on what you're reading. Thirdly, I love the now playing feature, which identifies the song that's currently playing when the microphones hear it and displays this on the phone's lock screen. This is really great for when you're in a shop and you hear a song playing that you really like and you want to know what it is so you can add it to your Spotify playlist. This is a feature that's been on Pixel phones for a little while now, but as a newcomer to the Pixel line, this has definitely come in useful a few times. I'm also still holding out hope that the web page summarize feature will eventually come to the UK because at the time of filming this is a feature that's still exclusive to the US. And this isn't the only feature that's exclusive to the US but isn't available to the rest of the world but that's another topic for a separate video. In terms of durability, I'd say the phone is still in pretty mint condition since I got it. This is due in part to me taking good care of it and also in part to it being in a nice protective grippy case. I'm using the official Pixel 8 case from Google and I really like it. It just does the job of protecting the phone really well without adding a load of bulk to it. One thing to mention though is that when I was filming my last Pixel 8 video, there are a few points where I put the phone face down on my desk to film the back of it from a top down angle. At one of these points, I must have put the phone down on a stray green of sand or a bit of debris that was on my desk because it caused a wee scratch on the screen. It's very small and difficult to see unless the screen is off and you're actually looking for it but it didn't fill me with a massive amount of confidence about how easy the screen is to scratch. Basically, if you're happy using a screen protector, then I recommend putting one of these on the Pixel 8 screen and you should be fine. In general use, I've been really enjoying using this phone. As I said, the Pixel 8 does last a full normal day of usage on the battery, but it's not going to last longer than a day without turning on the battery saver mode. So if you had any hopes of that, you can throw them out the window. But something that is going to last and get better over time is the clean and functional software experience. I just find it really enjoyable swiping and scrolling around Android 14 on this phone. Although one little niggle is that the skip and go back buttons on the lock screen widgets for apps like Spotify are absolutely tiny, which means I've found myself trying to press the skip button two or three times before it actually connects and skips the song. This is frustrating and such an easy fix. Google should just put these buttons either side of the play pause button and make them the same size with a visible back Background. It's quite a small issue, but it is annoying. Fundamentally, I've really enjoyed using the Pixel 8 over the last month, and because of that, it's a really easy phone to recommend for the majority of people. I think the price of £700 in the UK or $700 in the US is reasonable considering the features that you get, and it's going to be an even better deal if you can get it at a lower price on offer. The battery is not an issue in everyday use, the camera is excellent, and the software experience is really smooth. There are only a few people who I'd recommend don't buy this phone. Firstly, you shouldn't buy the Pixel 8 if you need a phone with a powerful CPU or GPU, because the Tensor G3 isn't designed to be a powerhouse like Apple's A17 Pro or the newer Snapdragon chips. Secondly, avoid this if you need a battery that lasts longer than a day, because this phone just won't do it for you. And thirdly, if you need more manual controls over the camera settings and you don't mind having a bigger screen, then I'd recommend going for the Pixel 8 Pro instead. But if none of those apply to you, then I can easily recommend the Pixel 8 and there's a good chance that it'll get even better over time with software updates, which is always a bonus. If you do want to pick this up, then I've put a link down in the description for you. But I'd recommend you watch my first impressions and initial review video next so you can get the full picture of what this phone offers. You can watch that right here. Otherwise, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure and I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers.